All right, beg your pardon. Sorry about that. Okay, so sorry for the delay. Um, I'm Clara Rist. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Forestry, and I'll be presenting a operations research tool that uh, my lab created for um, optimizing um, field crew visits to um, uh, forestry research sites in Northwestern Ontario. Okay, so a little bit of a background on the problem that we encountered. Um, so my lab does research in moth damage to trees. So there's a huge problem in Northwestern Ontario with um, moths attacking and damaging uh, forest stands. And this is a big problem because it causes a large amount of dead trees. And if you think about it, you know, we have a huge problem with forest fires in Ontario. So if we have a lot of dead trees, that's like kindling for fire. So if lightning strikes it, somebody's camping and they drop a cigarette, it'll just like go up in flames. So what we do is we go into um, different field sites in Northwestern Ontario across the province, and we um, assess the amount of dead uh, trees and branches that have built up at different sites. So we know where, where we have a problem. So we do have, um, uh, tree damage uh, that's assessed by aerial survey. Um, and that's great. But we do have to go in in person and take a look at how much um, dead trees and branches there are on the ground um, because we can see that information from aerial survey. So um, field crews from our lab um, visit sites that were identified on this aerial survey as being impacted in specific years to assess fuel buildup and fuel breakdown over time. So we know, we want to know where there is a problem in terms of risk of forest fire. Um, so as you can imagine, um, this is hard work. It's a two month field season. Um, it requires a lot of um, uh, physical exertion by the crew. So they need to hike into these sites from the road. You can't just, um, you know, survey sites that are right beside the highway. A lot of times they're hiking into these sites. Um, over a long field season, and it is very expensive. You have to rent the trucks, you need to, to put gas in the trucks, you need to pay for accommodation. And the longer it takes, the more expensive it will be. So our question, especially this year, we were sitting in the lab in February or March talking about the price of gas, and we said, okay, we need to come up with a way to reduce costs of the field season. So our question was, how do we optimize field crew visits to sites to save time and money? And there must be ways to do this because there's this is just an optimization problem. So how do we schedule field crew visits um, across the province? So solving this problem involves defining site criteria. So each site had to meet um, specific criteria for us to visit it. So it had to have a specific um, amount of host trees that the moths attack. Otherwise, there's no point in visiting it. It couldn't have been burned by forest fire because if it was identified as affected, say in 2017, you can't go visit it if it was burned. It will have no information. Um, it has to have been identified as affected by the moths on aerial survey. Um, it has to be accessible by the field crews. They don't want to hike 10 kilometers through the, the, the bush um, from the highway. That's not good. Um, and it has to be near other sites to reduce travel time. So say we have 10 sites for 2020 that were identified as affected in 2020. We don't want to scatter those out because um, that will take too much time. But also they can't be too close together. So um, we used to do manual site selection. So we just look at the map and say, okay, these are the different layers we have on the map. Where are they met? And let's go, like if you find one where all the criteria are met, using ArcGIS, okay, let's go visit that site. But without optimization, this is time consuming, it's also subjective. Um, and optimal solutions may be missed. So there's some sites that will be really good. They have high host tree abundance. They're not anywhere near a forest fire perimeter. Um, but if you're just doing it manually, you might miss that site. So the other issue is, is sometimes there are no sites that meet the criteria. And if you're doing this manually, you need to go back from scratch, put in all the, the layers of interest, um, say in ArcMap or QGIS, um, mapping software, and then you need to, to, to start over. Um, 
So we said this year, let's build a tool that automates the process for us and means that you can go back to the beginning easily and, and try out different criteria. So just by the map um, that I'm showing here, you can see how complicated this is. So say you've got a harvest layer, these are trees that were harvested. You have a fire layer, these are trees that were burned. And then you have the moth damage survey and you need to figure out, okay, um, what's where, where, where are the criteria met? Um, the problem is like looking at this map, um, that's pretty difficult um, just for, for, for a person to do. So difficult and confusing. So we built this tool um, to help solve this problem. So essentially it's, it's, it's a web-based tool, but it also works um, just not on the web, on someone's can set up on their, their PC. So basically it takes the user through a series of steps um, that goes through the different criteria so that they can select sites that meet their criteria. So the first step is the aerial survey data. Um, that's the most important one. The sites that are visited um, need to be uh, identified as being uh, damaged by the moths on aerial survey. So that's done yearly. Um, so we have that information. So a really common moth that damages trees in Ontario is spruce budworm. So the user can enter that in the drop down menu, spruce budworm. Um, the aerial survey uh, also tries to assess from the air. It is somewhat accurate, um, the, the level of damage, um, mortality, moderate to severe defoliation, so damaged leaves and um, light damage. So the user can say in this case, they've selected moderate to severe, and then they can select the year of damage. So then um, uh, what the user will see on the map is all areas that meet that criteria. So that's a uh, map of Ontario, and that's the uh, damage identified on aerial survey for that uh, those specifications. Um, you do see the lines, just as a note, um, the damage looks a little bit weird, um, that's because it's aerial survey, so they can't survey the whole province. They fly like, up in a flight line, and then they come back around, say, 10 kilometers over. So they, they don't have time to survey the entire province. So in step two, um, the user can select the uh, species abundance of the host species of the moth. So there's no point visiting a site that's not the host species of the moth, because there's probably not a lot of damage. They don't, um, the, the big ones, uh, jack pine budworm and spruce budworm, don't attack deciduous trees. So you're not going to uh, survey an area with lots of deciduous trees. That doesn't make sense. So for example, the user can um, select the host species. This is for spruce budworm. Balsam fir is the, the favorite host species. And then they can select a threshold. So just for the purposes of this example, I've just put in 20. And then they can also select a date. So um, you can see here in blue, that's all areas that meet that criteria. So that's not just the areas with 20% balsam fir, that's the areas with 20% balsam fir inside of that um, area that was identified as damaged. Um, then they can select the preferred age of the stand. Uh, generally, these moths would have older stands. So um, you're not going to want to visit, say, a stand that is young, it's just been planted uh, by tree planters, uh, that's that's not good. So you're going to be visiting, say, a 50 plus year old stand. So the user can select that on a slider. Um, and then they also will see the areas within that damaged area that meet the criteria. So after that, the user can take a look at, okay, what are the areas within that aerial survey uh, map that meet their criteria? And you, you can see here with these criteria, it's still quite like there are a lot of sites available. So which sites do we select to reduce time spent in the field? You, we used to just take a look at this map and say, okay, which ones are we gonna visit this year? But we want a, a better, more optimized method. So first you can um, refine the sites further. So you don't want sites that have been burned. So what the user can do here is um, uh, exclude areas that were burned. Um, they can also enter a minimum area of the site. If the site is too small, um, that's a concern because we might not get enough data. Um, and they can also enter a maximum distance to the road. Um, here, for example, it's three kilometers. That seems very low, but that's because a lot of this is just like thick forest. So you can't have field crews hiking 10 kilometers because that's actually dangerous and it's going to take a long time. Um, there could be like 
sharp cliffs in there. We, there's no path. There's no ATV trail usually. So you, you can't have people doing that. So you can, if you take a look at the map here, you see the available sites have changed. You can kind of tell that they're around, they're along the road networks. Um, they're also not in the historical fire extent polygons, which we got from the Canadian National Fire Service. So this, from that map, you can see we still have a lot of sites. So how do we find the ones that are optimized for field crew visits? So again, you don't want your crews hiking through, through lots of forest. Um, you want the ones that are easiest for them to hit. So our task is identifying a combination of end suitable sites that are the closest together of all combinations. So we can't, can't use brute force to do this. Um, it's too time consuming unless you had really restrictive criteria. So there are multiple ways to optimize for distance. Um, we chose to use Google Operations Research Tools, um, an algorithm that can um, very quickly do this in a matter of seconds, actually, it's quite impressive. Um, so we created a mixed integer programming problem and we used the SCIP framework to solve it. Um, it works very quickly and it basically gives us an optimal configuration of sites um, based on straight line distance. So we actually didn't use road network distance because we A, didn't have a good enough road layer. Um, specifically, we didn't have a road layer that contained ATV trails. So we can also send crews out on ATV trails, but we don't have great data for this. So we know that our crews can hike through the forest as seen on the screen here. So we, we um, optimized for straight line distance, uh, which is not ideal, but um, it was the best we could do. So, uh, in step six of our tool, um, the user submits the number of sites that they want for that year. You have to do repetitions of this research. So um, you're going to select, say, five to 10 for each year. Um, when you run the tool, it optimizes and it will give you the sites that meet the criteria and are optimized. So you see here on the screen the sites that have been selected in this area. Um, so uh, the user can zoom in and out of the map. It's just not obvious where this is. So um, if you zoom out, you can see that, okay, these sites are near Cochrane in uh, just north of Timmins. Um, and then in step seven, the users can download the site centroid. So, so the, the GPS coordinates in the middle of the site, those can be entered into the GPS so the field crews can find the sites. Um, so we applied this method uh, for our 2022 field work. Uh, you can see the crews there with their trucks. Um, and uh, the, they visited the sites that the tool uh, selected for them. They conformed to expectations in terms of uh, the presence of moth damage. So we did have issues in the past where crews would arrive to a site and there was no moth damage. So there was nothing to survey. Um, so this year we, ha we had great sites. When they went there, there was the moth damage. Um, the host species abundance looked correct. Um, and you know, I talked to the field crew when they got back and they were, okay, this tool is good. Um, the field season was more time efficient. Um, it was easier compared to previous years where people had, you know, they had the physical map out in the truck and they were like, okay, we got to this site, there was no damage. So now we have to select another site. And then, you know, we're trying to find it on these backlogging roads. Um, so the tool is available for use on personal computers and online. It's currently available online, but it's quite slow. So that's one of the things we're working on. Uh, works much, much better on a personal computer, um, just in terms of querying from the database. Um, so future work, uh, we need to add uh, harvest um, into the tool uh, because the site, the filters can't visit sites that have been harvested. Um, we need to upgrade um, the tool with improved survey data. Um, it's currently affected by those uh, aerial survey gaps. We're working on filling them with satellite data. Um, we need to improve efficiency of the underlying database for um, uh, the online version. Um, and we need to work on getting a higher quality road layer that includes all the logging roads and it's, it's updated, um, as well as ATV trails. Um, so I'd like to thank members of the field crew, um, as well as some other members of my department um, and the uh, Canadian Forest Service who authored some advice. Um, and thank you all for listening.